Hi everybody, this is Rosa Sharon and I'm back again with another series review. I just recently watched Blade Runner Black Lotus and I really enjoyed the series because I'm a massive fan of Blade Runner and as I stated many times before, I'm a huge fan of anything cyberpunk and Blade Runner was, when I was younger, it was my expose into the genre, the genre. And uh, I actually enjoyed it, but I don't know if it'll ever get a second season and dependent on uh, <clears throat> Kiss Cartoon, I, I can't use it anymore. And of course, my my uh, my brother, I'm not calling him my surrogate brother anymore, he's my best, my, basically I should just call him my brother to avoid confusion with everybody that my, um, my brother, He's got Netflix and he doesn't like anime or cartoons or anything like that. So I'm not going to be doing any cartoon reviews for a while now. Unless I'm buying G Kids films, which is a possibility. Uh, I don't have my DVD player set up yet. Um, but in the, new, in the near future, hopefully I will. So I can do some more reviews based on things that I have on DVD that I haven't seen yet. And I will do them in due time so that that's a little bit frustrating and uh a little annoying because i like to be inspired by things such as that i was going to watch bojack because people had recommended me bojack time and time and time and time again so um i've only seen clips of it and from what i have seen is really good it's extremely dark but it uh tackles a lot of mental health um, issues that a lot of Western media just does not touch. And I have to say, and I've said it before when I did My Life as a Courgette, uh, a lot of French films do this, a lot of European films do this, but mainly French films. And I don't know why that is. Maybe the French are more mature in their understanding of reality, but I mean, they are romantic, but they are realists. <laughs> and I like that about the French. I, I really love their perspective. And that's why I enjoy French cinema for what it is, because they don't sugarcoat things. <laughs> they don't always look through the rose-colored glasses. So, yeah, they're philosophers in that, in that right. Um, but uh, beyond that, with Black Lotus, my only um, real nag about it was... The animation seemed a little bit jerky at times. It, it reminded me of Final Fantasy of the Spirits Within. I mean, to be honest, I know the film bombed, but it was one of my absolute favorite films <laughs> in the cinema, as well as movies like Titan AE, which, yes, did have trouble with pacing, but was really fun to watch. It had a great story, and, of course, the story had been done before, and uh, especially with movies like... Um, Treasure Planet, which I love anything that um, uses, like I said, cyberpunk. In that case, it was the original story made into a space opera, cyberpunk epic, which it was, I thought it was extremely well done. It was one of my absolute favorites other than Atlantis, because I'm obsessed with Atlantis in and of itself. And Atlantis borrowed from Nadia Secret of the Blue Water. Let's just put that out there. Yeah, they did. Don't deny it. They definitely did. If you've seen Nadia, then you know what I'm talking about. And you think, oh yeah, that's almost like a carbon copy. Except Atlanteans really weren't involved in Nadia. Nadia was a kind of a fantasy story. It dealt with some paranormal, mystical um, aspects that were... Um, fantastical in and of themselves but it just it made for a, an extremely fantastic phenomenal storyline and I think uh Disney was inspired by that and yes it it, it they they were plagiarizing <laughs> I don't hold that against them but I, I liked uh Atlantis and the sequel not so much the sequel is basically cut and paste and let's milk the cash the cash cow for all she's worth um yeah, but th this is the, the kind of jerky animation sort of reminded me of uh, things like Final Fantasy, Spirits Within, this, despite the fact that the the CG was 
really quite impressive for its time but if you look at it nowadays like if things like polar express and um christmas carol which are still my favorites they they, they didn't age well <laughs> i'd say that they did not age well but i don't really look at the animation at all anymore it, it's all about story and character and world building and taking a familiar concept and just putting new life into it because it's it's got a lot of um potential even though the story's been told before um and with sinbad i'm i'm gonna get a sinbad right here sinbad of the seven seas i would if they rebooted it and took their time to actually read the original which i the one of the original story is one of my absolute favorites this from Sherzad's um thousand one arabian nights uh, the original they should they should stick to the original and I, I know this sounds kind of controversial but look at what they did with um a, a tale um dark and grim g-r-i-m-m -M, based on the grim the grim brothers they should do that they, they don't need to dumb it down or kind of condescend or patronize because I don't think people in this day and age really need coddling. They've been coddled too much. I mean, I certainly wasn't. Uh, I was brought up with Grimm. So, yeah, you can tell why. <laughs> That's why I am the way I am today. Um, anyways, I, I would love to see it redone. But back to Black Lotus. I just, I didn't... The um the animation was a little jerky, a little bit unnatural. They looked very plastic. They they seemed to move like they were mannequins or like they were um Barbie dolls and it just kind of it it took away a little bit from the story. That's my only real nag cuz the story it's really good on its own and we find out about L as we go through the duration of the tale. And Elle has amnesia. She doesn't know anything about her. She just knows her name. She just knows her name is Elle. That's it. <laughs> she doesn't remember anything about her past or why she appeared, where she is now. And when she, when she comes to, when she wakes up, she's, uh, she's in this um, situation in downtown. And she looks up and she's terrified. Well, she, she actually has a stoic reaction. So you, at the very beginning, it's foreshadowing because you think, yeah, as a human being, if I were in a situation like that, I would have fight or flight, but I would go into more of a calm uh, approach. I would be frightened. Yes, I, I would be on edge. I would be uh, alert. So I'd have situational alertness about where I was. But she, Elle doesn't seem to have that. I mean, right from the beginning, we think you're not human. And we're brought into thinking that she's probably a replicant, but maybe she might be a little bit more than a replicant. So it, it sticks to the original telling of Blade Runner, which I like, but the only thing I didn't care for was, like I said, the animation. It could have been better. It, it just looked very unnatural. And I mean, there, there are scenes that were very smooth and very, um, um, Seamless in, in how the characters would walk from uh, their walk cycles, uh, how they move. I mean, her, her running didn't seem natural. I mean, even in a panic state, people don't run like that. <laughs> I, I mean, this is just a, a criticism. It's I'm not meant, meaning for it to be kind of a um, disparaging remark, but I think for the time... They did what they could. I mean, Crunch, Crunchyroll and Adult Swim did an excellent job by sticking to original concept here. But they could have done better with the animation. It just, it it looked very flat. It looked very unrealistic. It, it just looked very um, fake and um, unnatural. Very much like Polar Express. So... That was my one uh, nag about the series that I just didn't care for. So, um, I was uh, a little irritated that I'm not going to be able to do 
cartoon reviews or anime reviews. There were quite a few things that were on um, Kiss Cartoon that I was looking forward to seeing, but I guess that's not going to be the case. I, I may be able to see some things if, if Studio 10C puts some things out for free on YouTube, but I think I've seen enough of... Um, Bojack to know that I probably would have loved it because I like the the more um, cut straight to the chase, get to the meat and the coconut when it comes to adult animation and not having to, I mean, I like Big Mouth, but I, the one thing I don't like about Big Mouth is, is all the unnecessary swearing and some of the overt grossness of it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a good show, but it's, uh, to me, it's more along the lines of, yeah, I'll, I'll turn it on and I'll watch it, but uh, it just is kind of, you know, nonsensical, dumb entertainment for me, <laughs> but I do get educated through it, so that, that does have merit, so um, not all Big Mouth fans are freaks, because <laughs> when they did that call out in season six, it's like, this is Big Mouth. All, all of uh, the viewers are freaks. I thought, uh, yeah, no, I'm not a freak. I'm just one of those people who <laughs> enjoys being edutained. <laughs> That's a blanket um, definition of us, and I don't take lightly to it. I mean, I know it was in jest, but I still thought it was a little bit of a low blow, especially for the creators <laughs> of the show. But, um, yeah, I did. I thought, yeah, I've been called worse. Yeah, we're bring it on. People are cruel, but I know who I am. I don't need society or some show to dictate what they think I am because they're definitely wrong. But other shows out there, a lot of adult animated shows, just they stoop to the really grotesque and also the kind of um, really not well thought out dumb humor and, and Bojack doesn't seem to be that way from the clips I've seen so I already know I love it so I don't need to see it I'm, I'm fine with knowing as much as I do so I'm, I'm happy with that um let's see I'm writing quite a bit <laughs> what else is new um, I, I'm writing one that I, I think a lot of viewers, I'll, I'll, many of my gardeners will probably say, well, why are you doing this rose? It, it just seems a little bit ill-advised. I even wrote a disclaimer at the very beginning of it because I know that, you know, there are a lot of things I'm going to discuss in it that it might offend some people. So I'm hoping that it, it won't get people's feathers ruffled. It's just, it's out there to, to educate and enlighten and to... Um, to help others grow who have gone through uh, a similar situation to mine because I just feel like I'm an advocate. I, I'm one of those people, circumstances defined me. And I'm, a lot of people are saying, oh, you're playing the victim card. I hear the voice of my ex in my head. But I'm not playing the victim card. I'm, I'm playing uh, this is reality card. And, um... Sometimes things don't go the way you plan them to, but there's a purpose for everything. There, uh, there's divine timing. It's just like, I'm gonna I'm throw out what my dad always said, and I'm remembering that, and I forgive them for their lack of parenting on my part, just over-parenting me, I should say, being helicopter parents and being narcissists and manipulators and yeah, that, that hurt quite a bit. A lot of what they said hurt me deeply, but I know it's not my fault. So I am worthy of so much more. And I know who loves me and I know to whom I belong. So it's um, this part of what has made me into who I am now. I don't recognize the person I was a long time ago. And of course, yes, I have to combat that uh, the, pro the whole... Uh, tendency to deprecate <laughs> which is really hard I mean I, I just want to belong to something or someone so bad because I've I've been an outcast my whole life I've just I've never 
fit in anything. And it's just because I'm different. People don't understand me. And I try. I, I really do. But maybe I'm not supposed to. So that's why I'm writing this. That's why I'm writing uh, Screaming at My Shadow, Healing Past Wounds. Actually, the, the title is Screaming at My Shadow, subtitle, Healing Past Wounds. So I'm writing this so I can help others. And for those who have felt uncomfortable about grappling with the darker side of themselves. Because you could really get, hmm, you could sink into the mire of believing what that, um, shat, what I call the shadow, what the shadow says about you, what the shadow believes. What, what the shadow says and believes is false. It's, it's not true. Um, yes, it can actually make you into something more, <laughs> believe it or not. I know, I know it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but, um, I found that when I hear the negative back talk in my mind, I think, no, that's not me. And that's what I used to believe when I couldn't seem to suit anybody or, try to um belong because it, it just felt like kind of um pointless <laughs> and I just thought you know what I am who I am um I'm becoming better I'm turning into an even more incredible individual and this is the purpose for the story because I feel a lot of people have kept that part of themselves locked away because they don't want to talk about it. It's hard. This is difficult stuff. And doing self-work, going through the dark night of the soul, which I've been doing for a while. I went through it much more um, deeply after my, my dad died. Um, that was the most difficult period of time in my life because I just, I felt like I had no purpose and I literally wanted to die. I literally wanted to kill myself. I just thought that my broken heart would just consume me whole. And I got the help to get me through. Of course, they diagnosed me with bipolar one unknown, which I think is completely wrong, I thought. Yeah, you're not putting me into this box. This is incorrect. Other people have labeled me as autistic, which I don't know. Maybe I'm on the spectrum. I don't have any problems with focusing. When I, I can look at people's eyes, I'm not having an issue with that. I am a little bit socially awkward. I love people. I mean, I'm an ambivert, so I I do enjoy being around others, but um, as so far as being in the crowd, ew, no, I'm not a fan. Not a fan at all. But, yeah. I did an assessment, and yeah, aggression is as high. <laughs> Obviously, for reasons that are overt uh, <laughs> upbringing, you know, I say more. Um, I've let a lot of that go. I'm, I'm healing through just residual stuff that I think will go away this year. I mean, I, I know a lot of it's never going to go away. So that's just going to be part of me. I'm okay with this. <laughs> that's fine. Um, uh, as far as just um, getting this out to public... Uh, I, th I think, like I said, I think this will help people. I really do. I think it'll help other people who have maybe not um, done inner inner healing or inner work or gone through the, the, um, the Valley of Shadows like I have. And that's why I feel so comfortable about talking about death. Because it's been part of my life since I was a kid. And I'm used to it. I mean, it's just it's part, it's part of life. And it's not the the end all that people believe it is. And a lot of others may think, well, it's very, very painful sometimes. Yeah, it is. But, you know, we don't know. I believe that there's something more. But I just 
thought, well, this is why I'm here. This is my purpose. My purpose is to um, help others and give people a safe place to come and um, to talk and to get those feelings out and not keep them all bottled inside because it can be very, very destructive if you, if you just keep them um, contained. It's not good. It's not healthy. It is not healthy at all. Um, but this, uh, screaming at my, screaming at my shadow, I, I just feel is going to be really one of those things that, um, will help others. Uh, I really don't have that much else to say other than Brightstar and I are doing a lot of collaborations as of late and I will be posting more on Kindle. And I'm hoping that I can get help from my brother on Mandela Man. It's something that's been sitting for a year. I've not touched it. It's only 17 pages. I want it to be more, but it needs a structured sort of setup for it to um, have some good character building and, and world building so far as stories related because I've never really written a story per se I've usually what I write when it comes to scripts or anything like that is uh 10 12 pages maybe seven pages something I mean short stories I've I've done only short stories never books so this is whew, way different than what I'm used to um but beyond that like I said that's what I've been up to and um other than that uh I just, I hope that all my gardeners out there are doing well and that you stay up to date and keep tuned in and that you're having a safe and happy new year. Till next time, live well and prosper. Ciao, Titi.